I'm just trying to decide whether or not this road is a bit too rutted out to take the uh, high country down. Obviously, it's always a good idea to get out and assess your landscape before you commit to it. But I think if I choose the right line, I should be okay. The only question is, is it a good idea? I reckon I'll give it a crack. Now the guys from Australis Caravans have loaned me this 17 foot 6 inch tandem axle high country caravan to play with for a few days. The high country is the dedicated off-roader in the Australis Caravans range. I've been towing it behind the MUX and I've just found a nice little campsite down by the dam. Going to back it on down, it's a little bit rough and gnarly but we should be fine and once we've got the caravan set up I'll give you the grand tour. A couple of months ago we looked at a much smaller version of the Australis high country. It was about 14 foot and it was a a single axle caravan. Now that particular van had Australis's Extreme Pack, so therefore it had a whole bunch of extra features. This high country is in standard format, although it does have a slide out kitchen as an option. Having said that, this high country does have all of the features that make it a high country. I'm talking about an aluminium frame. We have the X plate protection, we have the dust reduction system, 200 amp hours of lithium battery. And just like that smaller high country, this one has loads of storage space. So let's get into it. So this is the slide out kitchen I mentioned. It's clearly, you know, self-supporting. We have hot and cold water lines. This is a substantial storage box on the A-frame. Either side, we've got a jerry can holder as well as a slide out tray. Um, I think this tray here would probably suit a portable fridge while you probably get a little generator on the other side. And I notice actually at the back, there is an Anderson connection as well. So that's just fantastic if you wanted to use this to um, store a portable fridge, you've got a way to power it. So on the top, we'll have a little bit of extra storage space as well. And we do have a remote control diesel heater on board. This is the fuel tank. And look, we've got a little gauge here and notice how it's been fully protected by a checker plate that's the sort of thing I like to see now the storage theme continues on the off side of the caravan now because we've got that slide out kitchen you'd be forgiven for thinking that we wouldn't have much room to work with on this side that's not the case so if I open this up you can see we do have a good amount of space just here despite the fact we have that onboard kitchen and if we go further down the back here we've got yet more storage space it's actually pretty decent. Well, I got the back of it pretty dusty, haven't I? Well, we've got an LED spotlight up there, reversing camera, spare wheel, and probably room for a second spare wheel if you really wanted to. Um, and even here, that's your toilet cassette. Now I mentioned earlier that this caravan is framed up in aluminium and for the cladding they've used a smooth composite aluminium as well as this protective X plate. That's an upgrade over the usual black checker plate that you'll find on many caravans these days. But the roof is a one piece composite fiberglass and the floor is like a honeycomb structure rather than a 12 mil ply. So effectively when it comes to the construction of this caravan there's no timber whatsoever. And of course it helps to have a firm foundation. In this case we have a four inch chassis with a four inch razor, but it's a six inch A-frame and that's got a 450 mil extension, which is great because that's how they've managed to fit so much gear up there. And as for the suspension, it's three and a half ton rated, tough ride, independent coil with two shock absorbers per wheel. And I actually quite enjoy towing this caravan. We came down the Hume Highway out of Melbourne. We found these gravel roads, there's a few lumps and bumps. It's been quite a pleasure to tow behind the MUX. It doesn't feel overly heavy for what it is. There was no instances of sway or up and down movement on the tow bar. It all just sat quite nice and level. And you know what, if I won Tats Lotto tomorrow, I'd give this van a good look for a big trip around the country. But before I can sit back and enjoy the sun, let's go check out the inside. Got to admit that the interior layout in this van is just a little bit unique. We have that space-saving east-to-west bed in the front of the caravan with a wardrobe off to the side. Obviously, we've got this large L-shaped dinette and this is really quite comfortable. And then we have a small kitchen with your four burner, cooktop, griller, oven, black sink with the filtered drinking water. But then at the back of the caravan, you've got some bunks in the offside corner. And interestingly, we have a bathroom on the back wall with a shower cubicle in there as well. And that whole arrangement, that whole design is quite different. And I think it does make for a good use of space inside this van. Remembering it is only 17 foot six inches. Now, one of the big points to make about this caravan is its weight. It comes in at 2,437 kilos at tear, and it has an ATM of 3,500 kilos. 
and that gives it a very generous payload capacity of 1,063 kilos. And of course, that comes down to the fact that we do have tandem axles on this caravan. While this standard high country mightn't have the same level of features as that 14 foot high country that I mentioned earlier, that's not to say it is not well kitted out nonetheless. We have that 200 amp power lithium battery, two 210 watt solar panels on the roof, two 95 litre water tanks. We have a grey water tank as well. There's a 188 litre compressor fridge freezer, the Sirocco 2 fan for the bedroom at the front as well as for each bunk. There's a host of USB charging points as well and they're all integrated in these reading lights both at the dinette, the bedroom at the front and the bunks at the rear. And no dramas from what I can tell with the fit and finish of this caravan. Often enough you see giant gobs of silicon under the sink where they've sealed the entry and exit points for the plumbing that goes underneath the caravan. Instead under the sink all that stuff is nicely sectioned off. And we do have a BM Pro battery management system just inside this cupboard here along with the BM Pro Mini Boost DC to DC charger and if you're not familiar with one of these chargers trust me they make a big difference. Pretty decent storage on the inside as well we have a large pot drawer just over there underneath the fridge another drawer right here and there's two drawers under the main bed as well not forgetting the range of overhead lockers so yeah it's a really interesting and livable layout for a family despite the fact that this is in standard format albeit with that optional slide out kitchen there's nothing here that feels like it's missing often I can walk inside a caravan and know very quickly whether it's been built with quality and care in mind and in the case of this caravan it has been built well it doesn't feel like a bog standard build or a bog standard layout there is a bit of experience on display in this caravan well I think I might go have a bit of a look around it's a lovely campsite and a beautiful day Thank you.